Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kaplan's USMLE Step 2 CKQ Blast. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we are here with this week's clinical vignette. As always, we will go through the clinical vignette, highlight the high yield topics that are going to be helpful for both improving your score on the boards and taking care of your patients on the wards. Let's begin. A 27-year-old immigrant from El Salvador has a 14 by 12 by 9 centimeter mass in her left breast. It has been present for seven years and has slowly grown to its present size. Her grandmother has breast cancer and her father has prostate cancer. Physical examination shows that the mass is firm, non-tender, rubbery, and completely movable. And it is not attached to the overlying skin or chest wall. There are no palpable axillary nodes or skin ulcerations. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, chronic cystic mastitis, or B, cystosarcoma phyloides, C, inflammatory breast cancer, D, intraductal papilloma, or E, mammary duct ectasia? The correct answer here is B, cystosarcoma phyloides. Let's review some of the other options. Chronic cystic, cystic mastitis, which is choice A, which is also known as fibrocystic change, is seen in reproductive age women and is shown to be tender and lumpy breasts which precede the menstrual cycles. Inflammatory breast cancer, choice C, presents in older women as swollen, edematous, and erythematous breasts with or without ulceration. This is a very aggressive cancer that has a very poor prognosis and is readily apparent based upon those clinical exam findings. Intraductal papilloma, or choice D, is the most common cause of bloody nipple discharge and this is due to the location in the ductal lumen. Anytime you see a most common cause of something, remember that for both the wards and the boards. The boards like to ask questions, what is the most common cause of blank? If you have somebody that has bloody nipple discharge, be thinking about introductal papillomas. Mammary duct ectasia choice E is a benign process due to subacute inflammation of the ductal system and presents as nipple discharge and retraction non-cyclic pain, and or subareolar masses. Again, this doesn't fit our description in the clinical vignette here. Some key take-home points about cystosarcoma phyloides. It occurs in young women and grows to a huge size over many years. It spares the skin and lymph nodes and underlying chest wall, and it is often seen in patients with limited financial circumstances who have not had access to medical care. So the board will sometimes have a, a, a patient like that present with a very large mass that has grown over many years. High yield takeaway points. Cystosarcoma phyloides is slow growing and usually benign in over 90% of circumstances. It may reach very large and impressive sizes in premenopausal patients. Physical exam shows that the tumor is freely mobile, usually four to five centimeters or greater, smooth and well circumscribed. All tumors should be resected after a diagnosis is established. This has been our clinical vignette for the week. I hope that some of these high yield topics will improve your score on the boards and help you take care of your patients on the wards. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care.